Welcome to my channel, like and subscribe. Third season of Netflix's Outer Banks is poor. Outer Banks has returned for a third season on Netflix, riding high off its renewal for a fourth season before these new episodes even aired, which is truly unheard of at the cancel-happy streaming service. Outer Banks has become a new fan favorite. The show is no longer particularly good, which is the bad news. Although Outer Banks was never the best show on television, it was still a decent amount of fun. However, as we approach season 3, that fun has largely disappeared, and I'm not sure I even want this show to return for a fourth season. I contend that the moment Outer Banks switched on its new El Dorado storyline, it was too late. Like 50 million other adventure series and films before it, it decided that finding the lost city of gold should be its new quest because the gold owned by the merchants, which is currently locked in Ward's vault after he stole it from the Pogues, just wasn't interesting enough. The season's treasure hunt alternates between three vastly dissimilar goals, with the theory that the Pogues are instead pursuing a single golden cross they fought over last season because they are unable to retrieve the gold hoard because it is locked away. This is all set against the wider backdrop of the El Dorado expedition led by Big John, the father of John B., and Carlos Singh, a new antagonist. The resurrection of Big John, which revealed that he wasn't actually dead at the end of season two, has been unquestionably one of the season's worst elements. Big John is a bad character, despite the fact that their first meeting is pleasant. Although you're sort of supposed to think he's bad and pushing John B. in the wrong directions, I just hated every second of him being on screen because he ends up severing John B. from his friends for half the season. He completely contradicts the tone of the show in every way. The remainder of the show is drama for drama's sake, and, to be honest, it's getting a little tiresome that the cast members are never, ever allowed to win for longer than two seconds. There are some incredibly ridiculous reasons why relationships break down. The Camerons frustrate treasure hunts for the a millionth time. This game has virtually become uncharted because the original antagonist Ward Cameron has been neutralized and replaced by the less compelling Carlos Singh and his enormous gang of mercenaries. Nothing about this works. It's a poor season of a program that, at the very least, used to be better. I'm honestly surprised that Outer Banks was renewed for season 4 if that decision was made as a result of some Netflix executive seeing an advanced screening of season 3. It feels like the show has no real future plans. We'll wait and see what audiences and critics think of it. Although we're in an odd scenario where only four reviewers appear to have watched the number one series in America right now overall, the audience ratings seem to be roughly the same as last season but the few critic ratings that are in have caused it drop drastically. You could say that this is a for-the-fans situation, but I'm not sure how those fans could appreciate what these characters are going through in this grueling new season. This series definitely has to have an endpoint in mind, therefore I truly hope season 4 can turn things around. Thanks for watching, like, share, and subscribe to my channel.